I'd like to welcome everybody to the Monday, July 1st, 2019 meeting. Uh, my name is Rick Mahalovich. I'm President Pro Tem, and I'm presiding in the absence of the mayor. Um, we will start the meeting tonight with a prayer by Councilman uh, Graham, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, fill us with your spirit and courage so that we might bring our talents and gifts to this meeting to do the important work for our city. Lord, open our minds to the task at hand. Open our ears to listen to each other. Open our hearts to your will. Heavenly Father, help us to understand that everyone is, going, is not going to agree with us tonight with our decisions. But as long as we put you first, everything will be all right. As we approach the fourth day of July, let us all be reminded that this date represents the Declaration of Independence and the birth of the United States of America. Lord, usually we celebrate a birth with showers and gifts. So Father, in times like these, it is my hope that we can share some love with someone today and the rest of our lives. Bless our servicemen and women, both at home and abroad that helps to ensure that we have that freedom. Bless this nation, bless this state, but most of all, bless the city of Jefferson. I pray a special prayer for those who were affected by the tornado and flood. Let them know that you are God and God alone. Lord, we thank you for last night laying down, but we truly thank you for allowing us to rise this morning and see yet another day. Help us to understand that you allowed us to wake up this morning so we could correct what we did wrong on yesterday. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Fitzwater? Present. Graham? Present. Hensley? Hussey? Kimna? Here. Mahalovich? Present. Prather? Here. Schreiber? Present. Ward? Wiseman? Present. Okay, I call for the adoption agenda minus uh, 4A. Second. Okay. All any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, item five, public hearings. We have none. Item six, appointments by the mayor. We have none. Presentations from staff, consultants, and invited guests. Uh, not, not yet. Okay. Um, we have none. Announcements by our mayor, council, and staff. Uh, any notices from uh, chairs? None there, none there. I have a guest uh, tonight, Chris Shepherdly, with uh, Salute to America. That uh, I'd like to have him get up and uh, tell us what's going on in the next few days. Uh, welcome to our meeting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So first of all, thank you for your support for Salute to America. We really appreciate everything that the city does to help our event be successful and celebrate our independence and in, in a very positive way and. <clears throat> This year, especially, uh, you know, it was a challenging, challenging time here, and so I think it's important that we we move forward and we and we do some celebrations. Um, had lots of uh, tragedies uh, in, in the last 30 days, um, last couple months, but as we move forward, it's important for us to celebrate all the good things that we have. So, uh, just real quick, uh, won't won't take up a lot of your time, but uh, just wanted to let you know what was going on uh, July 3rd and 4th. Um, We'll start off July 3rd with the parade um, starting right here at City Hall and going through downtown. We'll have the opening ceremony uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, sponsored by Not Not. <clears throat> then we'll, uh, we'll have lots of entertainment in the beer gardens and then also uh, our main stage uh, performer will be C Craig Campbell. Um, Lots of different things going on on the 4th, uh, starting about 11 a.m. Um, with the Boys and Girls Club Drumline at noon, um, Royal Tigerettes at 12.30, Jeff City Dance Academy. Uh, 3 o'clock is uh, Jay Finney's Hot Dog Eating Contest. 
That's always a fun one. Come participate. <laughs> Looking at you, Ron. I'm going to sign you up. <clears throat> um, and then, again, lots of entertainment at the, at the beer gardens there. Uh, and then, um, just to kind of summarize here, but uh, uh, Super Jam will start performing at 7.30, and then we'll, we'll uh, finalize the festivities with the Red, White, and Boom uh, Sky Concert um, and hope for good weather, pray for good weather. Uh, <clears throat> lots, of, lots of many great sponsors that uh, have supported this, and, and so we, we really thank them and couldn't do it without them. And, um, and again, you know, thank you to the city for all your efforts and support and, and uh, contributions. So we really appreciate uh, everything that you guys do, and hopefully uh, we'll see you on the 3rd and 4th, and um, we're, uh, we're very few close because it's probably going to be hot. Well, thank you for the update, and thank you for your leadership on the, on the committee. Um, are there any questions? Is that one? What, what time and date is the, uh, the parade? The parade starts, yeah. I believe, at 5.30 or 6, um, and I can get that for you exactly. Exact. line up 6 o'clock yeah. from yeah, our I parking lot right here. Right. 5.30? Yeah. Yeah, and six o'clock. I might add, uh, just to throw out, uh, there will be a uh, a, barrier, a banner carried by supporters yeah. and uh, elected officials who wants to be involved. Uh, uh, J.C. Strong banner. It'll be the last thing in the parade. Uh, so all the council is invited to uh, walk behind the banner and and show your pride and and support for the vo many volunteers. I see it on here now, the parade. <laughs> Eyes are getting bad. <laughs> Mine too. That's why I have these. <laughs> thank so, you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, no further announcements. We'll go to number nine. I don't know that we have a Lincoln U update. Um, anything, Councilman Graham? Okay. Nope. Uh, uh, item number 10, presentations from the gallery, specific bills, resolutions. We do have one person's signed up that's uh, Dan Schmitz uh, regarding Clark and Dunklin roundabout yeah you're welcome to come up and uh, give your name in the microphone and <coughs> thank you welcome excuse me welcome oh thank you uh, I am Dan Schmitz I'm gonna spend these next few minutes to try to convince you guys to rethink this Clark roundabout intersection thing um, a lifelong resident of Jeff City, driven through there. I'll give up my age, 51 years. I've never had a traffic flow issue there. I come off of Bald Hill, usually go right toward the highway. Um, I like roundabouts where they're necessary. Uh, for example, the one at Ellis and Tanner Bridge was excellent. If you remember, cars used to back up like maybe all the way to the fire station near Elks before the roundabout. I've seen the need for it. It works well there. But if you drive through the intersection of Clark and Dunklin, often you'll see there isn't a traffic flow issue there. I spent some time over the last few months talking to people that work for the city street division past and present and some of the council members and it seems to me like this whole idea was started some years back when Lincoln asked us to vacate Chestnut Street and that administration is no longer there and I don't think the current administration is pushing that issue so I think what Lincoln was asking then if we're going to vacate that we need to alleviate this exist this additional traffic pressure on the intersection with the roundabout since that street never was vacated there isn't added pressure there and I don't think the new administration has it in their mind to vacate that street also came to my attention that at one time when Lee's grocery store was there cars would park right up against Clark I'm sorry yeah Clark and you couldn't see well looking up toward Bald Hill but the new uh, building built there the church I believe there's been a curb poured which brings the cars back probably a good 12 feet back further which increases the line of sight and at the same time that left hand turn which your engineer considers I guess obsolete sort is using I don't feel it's necessary anymore because you can see well enough looking toward Bald Hill if you're at Dunklin since those cars are now moved back the Lafayette ramps taking a lot of pressure off that intersection again doing away with that left seems to be the whole heart of the matter here if you read his quotes he talks about he kind of supports my cause he tells us the volume just isn't there to support a signal he goes on to say 
there are very low, low volume times at this intersection, so you wouldn't want a stoplight because you would be at a stoplight, a red light, while there's no one at the intersection. He also goes on to say the primary concern here is the confusing left-hand turn if you're coming up Dunklin toward Clark, which I agree it's kind of confusing. It's one of a kind thing in Jeff. But again, you can get rid of that and just make a normal left turn there. Make, keep it a two-way stop. There just isn't a lot of cars coming from eastbound Dunklin to Clark. Neither is there many coming from the other side, which would be the Cardinal Houchin Street side. So uh, I don't see it as an improvement. It may even be a deterrent because when you come to a roundabout, you do have to slow more than if it was a straight through. So you're going to create all the people going north and south on Clark to slow down to take that circle. And it's my understanding they got to buy that church too to make room for the roundabout. And looking back, I think when the Lafayette interchange was built, the buildings that were moved there, the people that owned them didn't appreciate them being moved. They felt like they were kind of being ostracized to move their buildings that had been there for 100 years, like the, the church that was down at the bottom of that ramp that got moved. So you're kind of moving another church if you build this roundabout. So I don't think they're going to they're gonna like that. Um, we got to buy the church. Perhaps a, just a pedestrian cross light there. I see more pedestrian issue there than I do car issue. A lot of people walk up from the Lincoln area to go across the street, and they'll dart across in front of you there. So perhaps a signal like you have here at Clark or um, McCarty by the Truman Building where they walk across there and press the button. That works well. Um, wouldn't cost near as much as $1.7 million either. That covers my thoughts on it. Um, hope I'm not too late. I've talked to some people, and they said this is already a done deal, so I don't know how all the... All the processes go, but I know you're about to approve a bill with Bartlett West to design it, so think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Schmidt? Yes, Councilman Weiss. Yes, thank you. Um, I've also heard some concerns about the pedestrian, um, about pedestrians in that area. Where do you think the best place to put a crosswalk would be? In front of that church, which would be on the the south side of Dunklin at the church. Anywhere else, you get the road gets really wide there, and you'll be walking them through that odd left turn. So if you get rid of that, the narrowest crossing would be to the to the south side of the, of the intersection of Clark and Dunklin. Are there pedestrians crossing at any of those other um, uh, other portions of the intersection that you can tell? Yeah, they mainly cross in the middle of that left hand turn because probably less volume there, more uh, gaps to get out halfway and then get halfway and get halfway. That's where I see people staging themselves halfway and then making the other portion. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next item is the uh, consent agenda. I'd uh, accept a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passes. Item 12, bills introduced. We have item 2019-025. Um, Mr. Sanders. You may read the bill. After the clerk reads the bill. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Chapter 35, the Zoning Code, pertaining to medical marijuana dispensary facilities. Now, Mr. Stanton. Thank you. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission, oh, excuse me, let me back up. I always get ahead of myself. Uh, this is a standard ordinance that would be amending the existing uh, zoning code regarding medical marijuana dispensaries and uh, transportation facilities. It uh, came through the Planning and Zoning Commission last month and is brought to you, uh, and there will be associated public hearings if it moves forward on July 15th. Um, the, uh, the, the two major amendments uh, regard transportation facilities, which would support the transport of medical marijuana between uh, either the cultivation, manufacturing, or testing facilities, and also between dispensaries and between dispensaries and ultimately the, uh, the, the, the patient requiring the medicine. Um, the transportation facilities uh, are uh, being recommended and uh, suggested by the Planning and Zoning Commission that they fall into the same category as the cultivation and uh, uh, the, the warehousing and manufacturing and the same thousand foot buffer. Um, the other change, let me just bring up a map here real quick. There you go. Sorry, uh, I had my map there. Uh, the uh, sort of light pink shows the areas in the M1, M2 where the transportation facility would be permitted. 
Um, the other change regards the retail or the dispensary of medical marijuana. Uh, this came before the Planning and Zoning Commission with a recommendation to be included in the C2 district. Uh, after a discussion by a citizen and among the Planning and Zoning Commission, they decided to increase that to the C1 district. Uh, that's what this map is here. Uh, there's, there's more C2 area than there is C1. Uh, the buffer distance would be the same as in the other medical facilities, uh, medical marijuana facilities with a thousand foot buffer as someone could lawfully walk between one establishment to another. And uh, there's a variety of uh, how they do that calculation if it's whether it's in a suite or if it's in a standalone building. Um, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Sanders? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to item uh, 2019-026. Uh, An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri approving a preliminary PUD plan for property address is 3215 Masonic Court. Mr. Sanders. Thank you. Uh, this bill would approve a preliminary plan unit development um, out off of Masonic Court, uh, which is uh, just south of Truman Boulevard. Um, the property is um, at the end of the uh, cul-de-sac. The uh, property owner is Rose International, which is located one parcel above it, uh, actually on the intersection of Truman and Masonic Court. They have a lot of employees right now. Parking is very horrendous. They park uh, all over the cul-de-sac. Uh, the map kind of shows an outline. You can't really see it too well, but there is another facility between that parking lot that they're uh, proposing in their PUD plan and the location of their business. Uh, the parking lot um, would hold about 100 vehicles. It is uh, located uh, 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 as far as from the uh, nearest property line. The closest distance is 80 feet. There is a repairing corridor. It, it's wooded and they have allowed for accommodating a future greenway trail which is on our uh, i believe the 2007 uh, greenway plan as something that is to be considered as, as future development um, with that oh, there was one letter of correspondence it's in your packet from a property owner to the south a city staff called the property owner and uh, i believe was satisfied with the comments uh, 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 how we addressed them and they did not come to the planning and zoning commission to uh, to, to make further comments. With that, I'd be, there's no fiscal impact either. Sorry, I forgot that before. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Sanders? Seeing none, we're moving on to Bill 2019-027. Clerk? An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Chapter 19, Motor Vehicles and Traffic by the addition of parking time restrictions on Clark Avenue in front of 1015 East Atchison Street. Mr. Brett Smith. Uh, yes, this uh, bill, w as the clerk uh, stated, would uh, create a time-limited parking on a, uh, about three parking spaces uh, on Clark Avenue, uh, adjacent to the property at 1015 East Atchison Street. This issue was uh, dis requested through the Transportation and Traffic Commission meeting, and they recommended approval. Staff be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, we're moving on to item 2019-028. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Chapter 19, Motor Vehicles and Traffic by modifying parking restrictions in the 700 block of Madison Street. Mr. Smith. Yes, this bill would extend the two-hour parking time limit on Madison Street to include uh, a, a, a one additional property, which uh, has recently been converted into an appliance store. Uh, th again, this issue was discussed at the most recent Transportation and Traffic Commission. Staff be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Seeing none, we're 2019-029. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Chapter 19, Motor Vehicles and Traffic by adding a stop sign to River Bluff Court before entering Hazleton Drive. Mr. Smith. Uh, yes, River Bluff Court is a recent addition uh, to the neighborhood uh, at the request of citizens of that area. Uh, staff reviewed the uh, traffic control needs and are recommending a stop sign. This issue was uh, uh, discussed at the Transportation and Traffic Commission meeting, and uh, uh, they have recommended approval of placing a stop sign on River Bluff Court before entering Hazleton Drive. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Smith? Seeing none, we'll move on to 2019-030. 
An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri amending Chapter 19 Motor Vehicles and Traffic by modifying the no parking area on the south side of South 10 Mile Drive east of Missouri Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Smith. Yes, uh, we would consider this bill more of a cleanup than anything else. The existing ordinance had the vast majority of this area already as no parking, but it referenced a street name as the ending point, which does not exist. Uh, this current bill would uh, restrict parking on the uh, south side of South 10 Mile Drive the entire length uh, from Missouri Boulevard to its terminus uh, in the vicinity of Grace uh, Episcopal, uh, Episcopal Church, I believe, uh, and right where it uh, intersects with Highway 179. Be happy to answer any questions. Seeing none, we'll move on to item 2019-031. Uh, an ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Chapter 19, Motor Vehicles and Traffic, by addition of no parking areas on West Main Street adjacent to Ware Avenue. Mr. Smith. Uh, yes, this issue is brought forward by residents of the Paddle Wheel subdivision area. Uh, they were concerned about uh, issues with traffic entering and exiting Ware, uh, Ware Avenue from West Main. Uh, after discussion and uh, two meetings with the Transportation and Traffic Commission meeting. Uh, it has been recommended that we remove parking, one parking space either side of Ware Street on West Main, on the north side of West Main. Staff be happy to answer any questions. Just a comment. Yes. Uh, I, I just want to commend uh, staff and, and also the committee, because uh, like Britt indicated earlier, uh, they spent two meetings talking about this. So this was something that the committee uh, had um, a, a thought uh, into this entire process. So I just want to say a uh, great job to to Britt and to the committee for for hearing this. This this took a lot of time to get to where we're at here. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, we're moved on item 2019-032. Uh, an ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, approving various documents and actions in connection with the issuance of bonds for the Capitol Mall project by the Industrial Development Authority of the City of Jefferson, Missouri. Mr. Mullen. Thank you. Um, this is a series, a package of uh, agreements to be approved by the City Council, which will allow uh, the Jefferson City Industrial Development Authority to issue bonds related to the Capitol Mall, TIF, and CID. <coughs> the uh, the package the sorry the agreements that uh, are being approved by this ordinance uh, first one is a t trust indenture between the industrial uh, development authority and UMB Bank acting as trustee um, essentially this governs how UMB Bank as trustee would uh, administer the bonds. Um, this approves a financing agreement between the city, the Capital Mall, CID, and the Industrial Development Authority in which the city pledges uh, TIF revenues and uh, to, uh, to pay off the bonds. Um, the next one is a bond purchase agreement uh, between the city, the uh, CID, and Stiefel Nicholas and Company, uh, wherein Stiefel will act as, agrees to act as underwriter for the bonds and uh, purchase the bonds. Uh, for resale on the uh, on the bond market um, the next agreement is a continuing disclosure agreement in which the city uh, agrees to make uh, continuing disclosures about the uh, finances of the city uh, through the municipal municipal regulatory sorry the municipal securities regulatory board um, and then finally a tax compliance agreement between the city the uh, CID and the IDA and the trustee in which the city pledges not to uh, take uh, certain actions which would affect the tax exempt status of the bonds and finally there's a, a, a form of a preliminary official statement which essentially is a, um, a report on the financial health of the city um, that is uh, that is used in the marketing and the initial offering of the bonds I hope you've uh, reviewed all 175 pages and uh, are over the over the past month I have and you've uh, recommended uh, approval yes and we have uh, representatives here that can answer any other technical questions yes uh, mr. Richwood from the law firm of Posinelli they represent the developer on this deal and they are uh, mr. Wood is available to answer any questions that you may have for the uh, developers uh, side of the of this okay. project very good thank you any questions 
Seeing none, we'll uh, move to bills pending. 2019-019. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Bartlett and West in the amount of $152,566 for the Clark Avenue and Dunklin Street intersection project. Mr. Smith. Yes, uh, as the clerk stated, this pro uh, this bill would authorize a contract with Bartlett and West for the design of a roundabout at Clark Avenue and Dunklin Street. As uh, the council is aware, this uh, project was identified in the most recent half cent sales tax project uh, as a, uh, a, a joint project between uh, county and city. Uh, and this is the next step in that phase. Uh, after the completion of a traffic study to determine that the uh, roundabout is the most feasible and best long-term solution for the intersection. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Councilman Graham. So this is a joint uh, project between the city and the county for the half cent sales tax, is that correct? I believe that to be the case. Okay. I apologize, That's this isn't normally my area to cover that, but that is my understanding. Councilman Prather. So we have a county oh, person me. here. Is that correct? Okay, that's okay. I'm happy to see his head shaking and that I was correct. Okay, <laughs> I, just want, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Uh, did you mention that uh, the study or uh, traffic study has already been done and it has been determined that uh, it would merit putting a round out uh, there? Th that is correct. Uh, a tr a traffic study was conducted of this intersection and actually of the entire corridor from uh, McCarty Street through this intersection, looking at not only this particular intersection, but how it would interact with future improvements at the highway ramps. And uh, you know, we believe that this is the best solution for the intersection, not only for today, but into the future. Uh, to Councilman Cram and his other hat, uh, do you know of any talks by the uh, Lincoln University with regard to uh, the vacation of Chestnut? Well, I know we still have some serious concerns about Chestnut Street and the traffic that comes uh, down Chestnut Street. So I know there is still conversation, there is still um, concerns about that traffic that's on that street. So. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, I am prepared to vote on this. The call, please. Fitzwater? Aye. Graham? Aye. Hensley? Hussey? Kimna? Aye. Mahalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schreiber? Aye. Ward? Wiseman? Aye. Motion passes. Item 2019-020. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with SAK Construction LLC in the amount of one million seven hundred twenty-seven thousand three hundred eighty-eight dollars for the sewer main rehabilitation 2019 project. Okay, Mr. Smith. Yes, uh, as the clerk stated, this is a construction project which would line some uh, sanitary and stormwater. Uh, pipes throughout town. The sanitary storm uh, is being done to eliminate the, uh, the inflow and infiltration of, of rainwater into our sanitary sewer pipes, thereby reducing our treatment cost. And this, uh, uh, that is the bulk of this project. A, pro a little over 600,000 of it is rehabilitating stormwater pipes throughout town, which have been found to be most cost effective as opposed to replacement of those lines. Uh, the stormwater money would come from the half cent sales tax. The wastewater fund would uh, fund the balance of the project. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Smith? Seeing none, roll call, please. Graham? Aye. Hensley? Hussey, Kimna, Aye. Mahalovich, Aye. Prather, Aye. Schreiber, Aye. Ward, Wiseman, Aye. Fitzwater. Aye. Motion passes. Next item, 2019-021. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Vizu Sewer of Missouri LLC in the amount of $168,900 for the sewer main rehabilitation 2019 project. Mr. Smith. Yes, this bill would uh, authorize a contract to uh, 
rehabilitate manholes within our wastewater system. The project is funded with wastewater funds and is similar to the previous one to eliminate influent infiltration into those manholes, thereby reducing our treatment cost. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. A uh, question from um, Councilman Timna. Okay, Councilman Graham. Uh, I'm looking at, at, the, at the, the bid and contract one and contract two. Could you explain the difference to me? Because I see the S and K was the lowest bid on contract one. And then uh, it looks like Visor Sewer was the lowest bid on contract two. Correct. Uh, we, what we did is we bid these projects. We bid three separate projects. One was the lining uh, project that's contract one for the wastewater contract two was the rehabilitation of the manholes contract three was the lining of the stormwater uh, contracts one and three uh, it was envisioned that we could have up to three separate contractors doing this work the way it was bid and, and contracts one and three um, SAK which was uh, considered low bid uh, not considered they were low bid and they were awarded in the previously read uh, bill and then the manhole rehabilitation visu sewer was low bid for that portion of the project so it was split up into two separate contracts so there would not be a lining of the sewer they visu sewer would would will do the manhole rehabilitation SAK will do the sewer lining and okay. one was done in the previous contract or previous bill this okay. is this bill okay got you thank you sir any other questions seeing none roll call please hensley hussey kimna aye mahalovich aye prather aye schreiber aye. ward wiseman aye fitzwater aye graham aye motion passes item 2019-022 an ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, approving a First Amendment to tax increment financing contract by and between the City of Jefferson City, Missouri and Capital Mall JC LLC. Mr. Molman. Thank you. This is an amendment to the tax increment financing contract between the City of Jefferson and Capital Mall JC LLC. 2014, the City entered into this agreement regarding the Capital Mall TIF and SID. Uh, these amendments to this agreement would allow the uh, bonds. Uh, previously uh, discussed in Bill 023 uh, to be issued. Uh, the original contract in 2014 did not contemplate issuance of obligations uh, using the TIF um, as, the, uh, as the source of funds to repay those obligations, so this makes the necessary changes um, to allow the issuance of the bonds. Um, once again, Mr. Wood from Postinelli representing the developer is also here to answer any questions that you may have for the development team on this. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Molman? Seeing none, I very much appreciate uh, your attendance and uh, looks like we're, you're going to get off free of any questions. Always a good thing. Yes. Uh, roll call, please. Hussey, Kimna. Aye. Mahalovich. Aye. Prather. Aye. Schreiber. Aye. Ward. Wiseman? Aye. Fitzwater? Aye. Graham? Aye. Hensley? Motion passes. Item 2019-023. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri amending the nuisance code pertaining to the maximum permitted sound levels in public parks to allow better enforcement of noise level violations within the parks. Mr. Molman will handle this one. Thank you. Uh, this ordinance changes the uh, the regulations regarding maximum permitted sound levels. Uh, currently, uh, activities that are conducted in public parks are exempt from uh, from the noise regulations. Um, I believe that the uh, Parks Commission received complaints about um, activities uh, that are being allowed and affecting residents uh, surrounding residential neighborhoods, and this is the attempt to address those some of those concerns. Um, what this does is that uh, it uh, maintains the exemption uh, from the noise regulations for activities conducted on public, par public parks, but only during the normal operating hours of the subject park. Um, and then it goes on to provide that if an activity is being conducted uh, in a public park outside its normal operating hours, in order to exceed the uh, generally applicable sound regulations, 
there will need to be a, a, a specific uh, waiver or sign off by the parks director uh, either through a license or permit or other writing that would allow uh, someone to exceed the generally applicable sound regulations outside the normal operating uh, outside the normal operating hours of the park um, it also provides the generally um, for outdoor events that are conducted to a city uh, issued license or permit um, that those activities are also um, exempt from the noise regulations this ordinance um, essentially flips the uh, the uh, generally operating standards and says that um, that the generally applicable noise standards will apply um, unless that license or permit issued by the city allows a, uh, a noise in excess of the generally applicable um, noise regulations. So essentially what we're doing here, uh, kind of shorthand the way I understand it, is that we're changing kind of our base understanding of how outdoor events, um, either city permitted events or events inside the, uh, inside the parks, um, we will allow for appropriate events to exceed the noise regulations, but only when the Parks Department has an opportunity to look at the event and judge whether or not that event is something that's appropriate to have a, an exceedance of the generally applicable noise regulations. If not, then the, then the generally applicable noise regulations would apply. Okay. I don't know if I made that cl all that all all that clear, but uh, I'm yeah. happy to answer any questions. <laughs> any questions, Councilman Graham? Uh, I understand the concern. I think the concern is coming from from what I've heard mostly um, from McClung Park, and it's when individuals have parties uh, late at night. Uh, my question is, who's going to actually go in with the decimal reader or whatever to say how loud that it's going to be? And then my, the other statement that I have is that I don't think it's more so the noise or the music that's been played inside compared to the people who are gathered outside in the parking lot that may be playing music that the neighbors will hear. So it's, it's, it's a twofold thing. I really don't think that it's all of the music that's coming from the inside, but it's more of the people who are hanging in the parking lot playing their music so who's going to who's going to be in control of S so going in with police this? Uh, the police department is the uh, is the agency that enforces the noise regulations so when events are happening inside a public park i would see the enforcement um, mechanisms being a cooperation between parks and the police and if they determine that it's not the loud music coming from inside the building but the people on the outside then what happens I would say that they would inform the people that are, you know, making the noise that's violating the uh, the ordinance that they are in fact violating ordinance and ask them to turn it down, disperse, take care of the problem. If not, then they would have a they would have reason to, you know, issue citations or whatever it may be. Um, but uh, essentially, um, as of right now, police would have no authority to um, to go in there and ask people to turn down the music, uh, whether it's coming from inside the building or out or from the parking lot, because all activities on public parks are exempt from the noise regulations. Here, um, the difference is, is that when it's outside the normal operating hours of the park, police would then have the, uh, the authority to ask them to, to comply with the noise regulations, whether it's coming from inside or out. Yeah, I mean, I, I support the bill, I mean, most definitely, but I just, want to go on record saying I think it's that it's most of the people who are outside playing their loud music in which those homeowners do have a right to be in a peaceful and, and quiet environment that's you know, especially you know late at night so I think it's more of the people who uh, patronize whatever event that might be at McClung Park yeah. um, I, I, the outside people. I, be I believe uh, that the this ordinance would give the police the appropriate tools and authority to help address those neighboring residents concern right now we just have to say sorry we can't help you because the noise is coming from a public park thank you 
Any further questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Kimna? Aye. Mahalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schreiber? Aye. Ward? Wiseman? Aye. Fitzwater? Aye. Graham? Aye. Hensley? Hussey? Motion passes. Nothing on the informal. Moving on to item 15, resolutions, RS 2019-3. A resolution adopting the 2019 Title VI program including Title VI non-discrimination limited English proficiency and public involvement plans for Jeff Tran. Mr. Smith. Yes, as part of our uh, uh, ongoing effort to comply with federal regulations, this is uh, a policy that needs to be reviewed each year um, and uh, be happy to answer any questions, but I will admit I have limited knowledge on the subject. Would uh, anybody like to question the limited knowledge, uh, Mr. Smith? On this subject matter. Seeing none. Uh, we'll take a motion. Get a mo we'll take a motion. Okay, I need a motion to bring okay. this on the table. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, now, voice bill. I'll, I'll get a roll call. Okay, roll call, please. Mahalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schreiber? Aye. Ward? Wiseman? Aye. Fitzwater? Aye. Graham? Aye. Hensley? Hussey? Kimna? Aye. Motion passes. Resolution passes. Item 16, uh, presentations from the gallery on other subject matter. We don't have any. We don't have any, it looks like. Uh, 17, council staff discussion. Presentation topics, none. 18, new business, no new business. Um, 19, unfinished business. I want to thank everybody for their patience with me and especially the clerk, who on my side's getting sore from nudges, but uh, she made it easy. <laughs> She's been nudging me. <laughs> I appreciate the, the uh, clerk tonight. And um, with that, I'd uh, open to an adjourned. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Mm -hmm.